Oh my, how things have changed. This week on the podcast, Carrie and I are taking a quick peek back at the burn bomb guide from 1985. This was the be all that you needed to plan your Walt Disney World vacation. And we're taking a look at some of the stuff that's really changed and some of the stuff we can't believe was in a guide. Stay tuned to hear more. You're listening to the Pixie Dust Fan Podcast. Hi, I'm Francine. And I'm Carrie. We're two best friends who can't stop talking, usually about Disney stuff. Sometimes we have fascinating guests, and sometimes it's just us. But it's always positive and fun. We're happy to have you join our chat. Thanks for listening, and let's get started. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, good grief. I was wondering what you were gonna, how you were going to start it. I don't know. I was actually thinking of, like, before you started to squeak in and be like, hi, friend. <laughs> I was thinking I like I don't know what to do I don't know what to do but I needed to do some kind of fun intro now the pressure's on for every week <laughs> I think we're just going to go back to the, the regular Hi, squeaky Care. hey Carrie how are you <laughs> what's shaking yeah. uh, I don't know not much well, <laughs> nothing exciting that's for sure I know yeah just shaking I, yeah, excitement seems to be, um, well, I mean, I guess it just depends what you consider exciting. Yeah, true. Yeah, I don't have much either. <laughs> it's um, weird. What We got weird weather happening. It's like it's it's been raining and, and like eight degrees. Yeah. Uh, and melting everything. And then apparently tonight we're going to have a lot of snow and cold. I know. So, it, so like, yeah. Uh, and they just the other day from Snowmageddon, they just the other day came by with those big machines on my street. You know, the ones that like chew through uh, the the big ice blocks on the side of the road and then spit them into a big truck. Uh, so they just cleared my whole street. And oh, now just it's in time. just in time for this to snow. You know, yeah, the oh, weather's been funny. insane. And you've yeah. been going into the office, but are you going to go in after it snows or... You'll no, see I how it is. I went in today uh, just in case it was yucky tomorrow. Right. So we'll see. I'll probably stay home if it snows. Like, why, you know? Yeah. Why do it? Yeah. Stay home in your comfies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The... It's nice to get away from these cats, though, let me tell you. Well, you need a little uh, break. You need a break. <laughs> <laughs> just a little break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm enjoying, you know me, I'm quite happy in the house by myself. Um, I, I'd be happy if I didn't see a soul for days and days. I'd be okay with that. But, hmm. well, except, you know, we have to, we have to catch up. But I did the other night watch the movie, Carrie. You did? I did. I decided, you know what, I just, you know, sometimes you get in that mood and you're like, I, I want to watch something, but I don't know what I want to watch. And I just thought, well, maybe I'll try it. I'm going to try a Marvel movie. And I went to Disney Plus and I did like, and it came up and it said like watching, I guess, chronological order or whatever. And it said Captain America was first. So I watched Captain America. What did I you mean, think of Captain America? So honestly, I liked it. Interesting. <laughs> I really did. I really did. I was very confused in the beginning. So I posted, of course, on, on my Instagram story. So I'm like, I'm a bit confused. And then our friend Jamie reached out and she's like, how can I help? She's like my, <laughs> she's like our, our Marvel guru encyclopedia. Um, I was very confused because Captain America, this is a spoiler if you haven't seen, although I'm probably the only person the who only hasn't person. seen it, right? <laughs> but they have the little guy and then he becomes the big guy. Right. Okay, so my going. question was, is the little guy a different actor? Like, is he <laughs> just like a right? And the, and like they have two different actors. And if not, then how did they make him big? Like, is he normally big or is he normally little? Oh, good grief. Yeah. So I was confused about that. Then like they kept calling them the dude, Mr. Stark. And I was like, but I know from my nephew's kids that Iron Man's name is Tony Stark. So then so I was is like, Mr. Stark is Mr. Stark Iron Man. Like, does he become Iron Man later? And why was it all Raiders and the Lost Ark kind of esque in the beginning? <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm and then you. Jamie's like, Jamie's like, just wait till the end. It all makes sense. And I'm like, all right. And it kind of did in the end. Um, so yeah, you know, I liked it. I like the story of the underdog. Mm. So yeah, I kind of liked it. Yeah. Wow. It was pretty good. Like, I think I might watch another one. I really like the girl in it with them. And now I can't remember her name. It's escaped me. But I think she has her own movie too. Like, I kind of felt like watching it that there were people in the movie that I had to pay attention to because I felt like at some point they have their own movie. <laughs> like characters that I sh I felt like I should be paying more attention to in case they have their own movie later. Ah, oh, so, gotcha. Yeah. But he was wow. so cute. And yeah, it was really good. I mean, I liked it. I, so let's see. You're moving on to the next one. I might move on to the next one, you know, one night when I, because I, my Devious Maids show, I ran out. Like I, I, I finished binging it. No, so I then... watched some of that, but then I stopped. How, Carrie? You didn't like it? It's all right. Like I just, I kind of, I kind of, um, yeah, I kind of put it in like a bucket with other types of series that are just like kind of fluffy and silly and. And it was interesting. It's just I like I didn't. It's not your thing. I watched it. I watched a lot of it, really, like, like kind of binge watched it. But it wasn't so much that like I had to keep binge watching it. Like I will finish watching them when I need something to watch. But yeah, like if it if I really want to binge watch it, like I wouldn't leave the couch till it was done, or I would find a way to watch it. But um, yeah, like I kind of put it in the bucket of like you know like shows like Lucifer. Or drop dead I didn't diva, watch that. I didn't like watch the that. like those are if, well, you'd like them probably because it's the same sort of thing. Like they're just sil like like desperate they're, housewives. There's they're silly and I don't even know. I think desperate housewives was originally trying to be like I like, don't know, like a drama series. Like I'm of. talking these ones from the beginning, and I think desperate housewives maybe turned into that eventually. Like, <laughs> but it's more no turned into like the silly thing yeah but it's more like you know like there's it's a complex story and there's characters and you like the characters and you like the story but it's just like like it's silly it's far-fetched or whatever but it's just like no heart like you know it's just you watch it kind of mindless and it's and it's silly like yeah. i said lucifer dropped a <laughs> diva there's a few of them that have been on like netflix or whatever over the years where yeah, so I, I kind of put the once I watch so many episodes, I'm like, yeah, I'm putting it in that bucket and, <laughs> and I'm not going to sit and binge watch it till it's done. But it's definitely where when you want something hmm. to watch, it's there. So, so I'm going to have to look for it. some it of these. It was interest. It was interesting. Yeah, um, I thought it was but, fun. I love Susan Lucci. So that was. Yeah, that's. Yeah, she's, 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 she's awesome. She's awesome. It was all right. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was good. So, yeah, there you go. I, I finally watched another Marvel movie. So I'm like in the universe now. <laughs> you stepped your foot. <laughs> you tipped your toe into the Marvel. Yes. Pond. But I like him. I do like Captain America. Mm. So. See, he's out of all of them, he's like my least favorite. Really? Yeah. Oh, I like but. him. He's an underdog and he was bullied and. Then he becomes a, a great superhero. And yeah, I, I don't, really don't they say that. it's like the, he's like the first one? He's yeah, like I don't the really first yet. Well, I guess because he's the first movie. <laughs> 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 like, I really don't like think like I really don't think much into it about him being an underdog or this or that. I'm just like, meh. I like a lot of the other superheroes way better than him. Like, really? I don't really I don't really uh, I don't put much obviously thought into <laughs> in depth thought into a lot of this when it comes to the Marvel <laughs> characters. I'm more like, yeah, like them. Yeah, I like this one more. I like this one less. I really like her. That's it. Like, that's as deep as it goes for me. OK, I'm so we're going to uh, we'll have this call. If I ever get through all the Marvel movies like you did, we'll have a we'll have a sit down and talk about, you know, which ones are our favorites. Sure. We could we <laughs> we could debate them, but you're gonna be like you'll be like I like she's she's underdog. I like this. I like that. I like this, and I'll be like, yeah, I I like because I like I like her purple sweater she wore. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, I don't I'm not too deep on any of this stuff. I'm just I don't think it's gonna be discussion worthy on my end, but I can definitely uh, <laughs> we can go through it. <laughs> <laughs> and listen to your two cents and be like, wow, maybe I should watch these movies over again. I just, because he kept getting beat up. I just felt so bad for him when he was the little one. Not, yeah, anyway. So that's been our week. <laughs> 
what are we talking about today, Carrie? <laughs> well, I at work um last week my boss brought me in uh old Burn Bomb Walt Disney World guide. And it's wow. from nineteen eighty five. And I think How I fantastic. actually like I think I have this book maybe because my friend Carol my friend Carol gave me a bag of old like Disney books quizzes like trivia books travel books whatever so i may have this one in somewhere in my house but when he gave it to me um and i took a quick peek through it i kind of like light bulb went on and i thought well wouldn't that be an interesting thing to talk about on an episode like to look back at this 1985 burn bomb book, guide burn bomb guide and and just maybe talk about some of the stuff that's inside of it compared yeah. to yeah well, not even compared to now. Just like just talking about some of the stuff. Just that's stand alone. Of it. Yeah, we don't need to compare it to <laughs> what's uh, happening now. But, um, but yeah. so this, yeah, I think it's great. And I honestly, I probably have a bunch of these uh, somewhere too in boxes throughout my house because we used yep. to buy them too. This yep. was if you were going to Walt Disney World because there was no internet. <laughs> <laughs> you went to the bookstore and you bought a book or a friend lent you their burn yeah. bombs guide to Disney. Pretty much. And this was it. Like there might've been other ones, but this was the, the leader and everything you needed was in this book. And you literally planned everything based on a book. Like what this listen, guy like, told you. <laughs> think about it. Like, Right about now where you have people that plan their Disney trips and before they've even left for their flight to go to their Florida trip, <laughs> they know exactly what they're ordering in every single restaurant and they've got their snacks scheduled every day, <laughs> you know, in between their meals that they already know what they're ordering. Um, that everything you you could know about going, unless you had been and you had lots of experience, you know, you read this book and got prepared for your vacation well like, and it, it's, ca it's kind One of book. <laughs> it's kind of funny though because we always talk about people over planning and people that like devour all the information online and I've always said that like I think it's gone crazy so far that people are planning every step of every day but when you talk about these books people were doing that way back then it too I it think was just so, but a it's different. Not so in depth, it was a though. different like, process. Yeah, it was. It was more like this. This book brings you from. I want to go to Florida, Central Florida, and it like talks about like everything from your like your accommodate, how to drive there, how to get there, take a train, <laughs> take a boat, take a plane, like right through <laughs> to the end. So it was like really everything, all the steps and everything you needed. So that you could make the choices that you wanted to make, like, or decide on your accommodation or whatever. But it wasn't to the, you know, there wasn't pictures to show you necessarily what the rooms look like, even let alone like, yeah, the there's no, there's no menus. There's no, there's not a lot of details. It just explains, you know, it describes what everything is so that you can make the choices that you need to, to make. So and one people, people, and people read this huge mm -hmm. book. To plan yep. for their vacation to Walt Disney World. Yeah, it's pretty. And I like, like you bought them. I bought them. Yeah, I probably bought the Disneyland one. Of course, when I went on my first <laughs> Disneyland trip, like not that like w like ten years ago or whatever. Like when I went on my first like full trip, I probably bought a Burn Bob Disneyland book. Um, so I that's probably the last one that I that I bought. But like in the early years, like you bought every year you were planning your trip, you had to go get the new. Because there might be something different. There used to be coupons in the ones. I don't like there used yes! to be a coupon page in the back. <laughs> and you could snip out those coupons. I don't remember what those coupons were for, but there was coupons in the back. But anyways. And Disney ones. So th meaning like it was kind of, this was unofficial, but authorized by almost like endorsed by Disney. If I'm not mistaken, you used to be able to buy the book in Walt Disney World. Uh, like yeah, I, I think I think they sold them there. It's the it was a the cover of this 1985 book says the official guide. Right, so it was endorsed, and it it does have the logo like the full in the D. Yeah, true. The, the ears there, so there's no like cease and desists or whatever. But they on they there. might not have really done that because he's probably <laughs> the first one that tried to do it back then. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, maybe they hadn't quite figured out how they were going to do that. But, but when you when you open the book, the very first page is uh, a letter from the Walt Disney World president, Dick Nunes. That, which, that is was insanity. the first thing when I opened up this book and I saw that I was like, wow, like the president of Walt Disney World wrote a letter, you know, when That's I first it. heard about Steve Birnbaum's <laughs> desire to write a comprehensive guide to the Walt Disney World Vacation Kingdom, I was impressed that he would want to tackle such an endeavor. Like, so it's the president wrote <laughs> something to go in the book. So it's obviously, you know, when we say it's the Bible, yeah, back then, it's the Bible. So I love the last paragraph that he writes. That Dick Nunes wrote um, in that letter. This guide through, though written by someone who has never worked for an organization, captures the spirit of what everyone at Walt Disney World endeavors to achieve. Isn't that awesome? Like, cool. they were, like, he was really endorsing this book. Yeah. So. Can you imagine Josh DeMauro endorsing, like, well, that's, a book And that's a fan exactly where right you go now? first. Like, when you think, when you open up and you see that, you're like, wow, like, that wouldn't. Like, that wouldn't happen now. I can't right. imagine so. them ever and endorsing And these books are still this. made. Like, they still, like, you can buy a 2022 Burn Bob's Guide to Walt Disney World. you can, Or Disneyland. Or Disney Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, you know, we probably should have looked to see. Are they official guides now? Like, I don't did, know. Do they say official guides now? We'd have to Google that. We should, we, we should really, I should go look at a new one. We should buy a new one and see. Buy a new and one see, and see? And see how informative it is. Like, <laughs> I'd like to compare how informative it is and the, how detail-oriented and, and the scope of it then versus now, like if it's changed a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long, like I probably haven't bought a Walt Disney book for 20 years. Well, why would you? But with everything on on the internet and everything changing daily, it just seems, you know, you feel like it would get printed. So 2022, they do a burn bombs guide. What are they talking about? The COVID restrictions that maybe are gone or the, the attractions that they've decided to close or open or character dining that was there that isn't. Everything changes so frequently now. I think yeah. back then in a book like this, you didn't have a way to kind of know how quickly it changed. Like they could write this book at the beginning of January and you go on vacation in September and you like you had read the book. So if something was a little different, it was OK. It must have changed. Like it, Your plan wasn't all thrown off, whereas today on the internet everybody's like in a frenzy if the crab legs are gone from a restaurant yeah i just read an article today that's why that's why that was in oh, my head why. there's like a huge outcry because apparently at the buffet at the beach club the crab legs are now an additional fee oh interesting yeah hmm. yeah an additional fee so anyway dick Nunes authorized this book <laughs> I wrote a nice letter so it could be stuck on it, so it could be put on the on the uh, inside cover page. So yeah, that's fantastic. Boy, yes. how things have changed. Yeah, for sure. And um, I don't know, like, there's so much stuff in this book, like that you could look back and compare. We could look at the they go in detail of the parks, like all the attractions, and explain them. So there's lots of attractions that aren't there anymore same with epcot yes you could do that they talk about all the restaurants like there's so much stuff that would be different and or maybe some like i probably never heard of most of the stuff that's that, that's <laughs> long gone restaurants but i thought it, um it'd be interesting like just with without with skipping all that stuff just kind of looking in the um, book at some of the f stuff we thought was sort of funny <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> things that yes. maybe um Things that maybe happened back then or weren't as, you know, it seemed a little, things were more simple, it seemed. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I thought we could point out some stuff. Like, for example, they have a, um, 
a page that lists all of the special events for the year. So you could determine what type of year. So what type of, what time of the year you want to go. So they have like the stuff that happens at Disney, but they also have stuff that happens in the area too, right? Like maybe if you wanted to go to like an orange growers convention or something, you could see what time of year it was so that you could plan your trip <laughs> then. But um, one that I thought was especially funny was that they had in the fall, a young at heart days where young Florida, at heart residents, days? <laughs> Florida residents, Florida <laughs> 55 and older receive special low cost admission values. So in the fall, I suppose when it's slow season. Wow. Like when the kids go back to school, they're encouraging some of the, uh, they're encouraging the 55 and up folks to come on down to the parks. We're going to give you a discount. <laughs> Not just like the first Tuesday of the month, like shoppers drug Mart. Like, no, no, it, this is whole... a full like months. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of interesting. That is um, fun. And it was October 1st to December 15th. So really the slow, slowish time after the kids go back to school. Well, and you may think like nowadays slowish is definitely not October because it's Halloween season. Halloween. And there's another uh, section in this part that says <laughs> Halloween is on October 31st. That's it. Shocking. So <laughs> at night on the holiday itself... Youngsters can get dressed up and join Disney villains in the Halloween procession at the Walt Disney World Shopping Village. Wow. Is that it? Yeah, that's like, it. Was so, there nothing in the parks? There must have been. You must have been able to no, go to the parks. You know what? I don't remember Halloween parties as a kid. So, hmm. I, d I don't remember. And, you know, maybe it wasn't. Although I think we used to go sometimes in October. But, yeah, I don't remember those. Maybe that's all it was. And at the, the Walt Disney World Shopping Village, that's Disney Springs. Yeah. So on Halloween, there were Disney villains and they pranced around the sh Disney Springs and you went with them. That's kind of uh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> kind of boring compared to what they do now. <laughs> Uh, another thing, and again, this is at um, the Shopping Village. They had Festivals of the Masters, which my friend Carol had talked to me about, or told me about many times, how they had like an art exhibit. So it's sort of like Festival of the Arts, but they had it at, like, what did they do in the parks? Like, you just went to the parks and it was old school playing parks? Like, they didn't yeah. have any fun festivals? Like, you went to the parks no, and just... you went to the parks, you went on the rides. <laughs> you stood in line and you went on the ride. And, if and you, you went on it of... 12 times. So, <laughs> like, I I remember standing in line for Space Mountain and you waited like an hour and then you got off and you got back in line. Hmm. And the cars, like the Speedway, we would line up to do that five times in a day. Wow. That's what you did. Hmm. And then you, yeah. you ate and then you went to your hotel and you swam in the pool and then you went back and you did more rides. That, that was that was all you did. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so it's such a different experience when you when you think about that. There weren't like big festivals and things. Not that I remember. No. And I guess, yeah, if they did have them, they were much smaller, like maybe just for the day. Yeah. Like over oh, they because they talk about um, New Year's Eve, like what they did on New Year's Eve. Yes. But yes, just New Year's Eve. And what they do on Christmas is just Christmas and just on Halloween. That's it was it. just There's on no... the days. Yeah. The 4th of July was, and mm -hmm. we were there one year. We were there for the Bicentennial in 1975 um, for the 4th of July and the fireworks. And I was mm -hmm. in the hotel because I was too young to stay for the fireworks there. But yeah. Just it's it's it, it was like the day there wasn't you know six weeks of celebration, which is now bizarre. you can't even get a day in Epcot where there isn't a festival going on. Well, that's a thing. Like if, if nowadays you need pages, like this is just like a like a column and a half where it talks about the things, the festivals, the seasonal offerings at Walt Disney World. <laughs> it's like a column and a little bit where they're saying, "Come for like the tennis tournament, or or you know the golf championship, or the one day for Halloween, or the one day for Christmas." Like yeah. just, like you need pages now to explain all of the in you know the all seasonal of the things that enhancements you do. and shows and the the schedule for. The festival, the, like the, yeah. the concerts at the festivals and everything, like the lineups and whatever, you'd need pages and pages to explain well, all that stuff. 
even if you just think about the Christmas stuff, like all the Christmas stuff at the Magic Kingdom, the decorations, the parties, the the parades, and then you go over to Epcot, and then there's Christmas in every country, and there's the the what's the candlelight um thingy where they read, yep. like. All <laughs> and the fire, like the stuff that they do on the Tower of Terror. You need like two weeks to go and see all the Christmas stuff. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. It, it just is. makes you think. Well, because they talk about this Christmas celebration and they're saying that it's, you know, from mid-month until the eve of the holiday, they have a nativity pageant. And in the Magic Kingdom, they have a Christmas tree and there are some carolers, but it's so low That's key. It? That's it, right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Meanwhile, now we're like, there's wreaths missing. How come there's no, there's yeah. usually a wreath hanging here and it's not? <laughs> imagine, imagine. I wonder what, like, the crowds. I don't, when you think about, or you see pictures from back then, the crowds just didn't seem quite as crowded, which is funny considering there were less parks. Yeah. Right? For sure. I, I don't know, like, uh, like, but the size of the parks are still the same, pretty much, like, sort <laughs> yeah. of, generally yes. speaking. Generally so, speaking, the Magic Kingdom's about the same size. Yeah, and Epcot as well. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, they have a page in the, in the, in the Birnbaum book where they talk about the, the crowds and they put numbers to them, which not like, I, I gotta go and read, like flip through a Birnbaum book. I don't know that they have this page in there any, no. or like you try to Google how many people fit in the parks and you can't, they like, don't, you, you come they up don't with release nothing. That. It's like, it's been, <laughs> what's it called? They scrub it? Is that the yeah. <laughs> they, what it, what is it called? It's been redacted. <laughs> Um, but, um, but this list here says that, like, it goes throughout, like, January through the first week of February, um, the average number of people in Magic Kingdom or Epcot, uh, 15,000 to 25,000 people. So depend, so that's the lowest. And then they're saying Christmas holidays through New Year's is 35,000 to 65,000. Wow. So, like, I don't know, like, is I would love to know what, what what it is now. You know that thirty five to sixty five thousand in two thousand and twenty two. It's got to be more than that. But it, they do have what the statistics mean. So the, and that's what's inter- That's that's interesting. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So are yeah, gonna, like, am I gonna, guess, Are you gonna read it? Like, well, I'm thinking. I'm like my brain's thinking right here. Like I'm trying. I'm trying to like. <laughs> I think back to when I first started going to like a Halloween party, like yes. twenty years, whatever, however many years ago, um, and reading how they have. So they say, what do the statistics mean? Fifteen thousand people is exclu is exclusive. Yes, twenty thousand is semi private. Like, what does so that meaning, mean? It means the park feels like it's semi private. I don't know. Thirty thousand longer lines, but still comfortable. So- Forty thousand getting busy. <laughs> uh, 50,000 highly active highly Six, active that's a nice way to say it <laughs> 60,000 crowded and 70,000 and up body to body body to body now that is descriptive <laughs> yes so so when I look at this like I'm trying to think of like okay so when I like not now but no when, when I would go when I would really feel like that Christmas party or Halloween party was exclusive yes yeah, like wh- how many people were in the park? Like, did was was this accurate? <laughs> was well, this... if if this is to be believed, when you look at it and it says, you know, Thanksgiving to the beginning of Christmas holidays, which was the least busy time of the year, it's ten thousand to twenty thousand people, which is exclusive. Yeah, and that's why you used to love the party so much, and maybe now we don't. <laughs> <laughs> because now it's probably getting busy. It's getting 40, busy. 000. Or it's almost body to body on a good night. <laughs> well, and I've always wondered, like, what does it really mean? Like, so at Christmas time, between Christmas and New Year's, like, I'll, like, if people mm-hmm. ask what it's like, I'll be like, from what, what I understand is, like, 
there's certain parts of the park where like you can't see the ground like there's that many yes. people like yeah. that's what body to body is but like i kind of would think it's probably more than seventy thousand. Oh, or maybe yeah. it is i don't know I but. think I'm trying to remember. I don't know what time of the year it was, but I was in the park. We had booked a dessert party. And while we were sitting at the dessert party, there were announcements that Main Street was closed and at capacity. The street was yeah. at capacity. And I was like, whoa, I don't know that I've <laughs> ever been in here when the street's been at capacity. So they were directing people off of Main Street. Because it, and I remember seeing the crowd and just thinking, oh, thank goodness we have a dessert party and we're sitting here until this park is cleared. We're not moving. Mm -hmm. It was like, I don't, yeah, that doesn't seem like something I'd want to do. But when you look at that, like 15,000 people in the park, how fabulous would that be? Yeah. Yeah. It would just I'm, be really neat to know like specific times when you've been there where, where the crowds really were so that you could be like, oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if only they would release these numbers. Yeah. So that yeah. was interesting. That's yeah. an interesting page, I thought. that um... It is. It is. What other interesting pages have you found in here, <laughs> Carrie? Well, one thing I especially wanted to point out to you was, but we won't go into detail, but uh, there's a couple pages in the book where he explains uh, how you tackle the day. So if you're going to Magic Kingdom for one day, he tells you, what you should do or how you should tackle the day. And and if you were going to go first day Magic Kingdom, second day Epcot, he does this up to three days, like he or up to five days. He gives like these these long paragraph scenarios of how you should tackle the day. And what I thought was really interesting was that even like when they talk about Magic Kingdom, like if you're there for two days, maybe on the second day, you should have a break and go to River Country <laughs> or go or don't forget to make your reservation for the hoop to do review. Um, so anyways, explains like how to tackle things. One little blurb said like, like the importance of like getting like the country bear jamboree because it's such, it's one of the most popular attractions. I thought that was kind of funny. But the one thing that I especially wanted to point out was that, uh, one of the days where he's, where he's explaining how to tackle Epcot, um, yes. is that, uh, that they say, when you enter the World Showcase, are you ready for this? Yes. When you enter the World so you go to the parks early, you be there at the turnstiles when they're unlocked, you, you send the fastest member of your party ahead to make a dinner reservation somewhere, like this is what it <laughs> says. Your fastest member of your yeah, party, I they, love that. So whatever. <laughs> so you grab your entertainment schedule, then you go to Journey into Imagination, then... You head over to the World Showcase, so they're telling you to go to to visit to visit the land and journey into imagination. That's when the park opens, and then they tell you to head <laughs> to important. World Showcase. And <laughs> and the first thing you do is you go see O Canada at the Canada Pavilion. Oh so my god! So even gosh. back in 1985, <laughs> Birnbaum, the man that wrote the Bible for Walt Disney World, told you that when you went to the World Showcase, which way do you go? But start that, at Canada. <laughs> Come on, maybe you start they at Canada. Maybe they didn't have the tequila and the nachos over in Mexico back in '85 because he talks about going back to La Celle for lunch at around 11:15 in the morning. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but he's telling you not to go too far. He's telling you to go. He's, he's telling, telling you to so, go only to France. He, and he does, there's no mention of a great goose slushy. You are just so excited. And then he tells you to come back to the cellier. He, he, he you agrees with you. He agrees with you. That's just like, there's his, there's evidence here that that's the way it should go. Like if there's, this, this endorsed uh, Disney Bible told us to go to Canada <laughs> first. I want to see the 2022 to tell you which <laughs> way it goes. Well, now by the, the time you get in and you've ridden all the things in the in the future world, <laughs> you're hungry. So let's go to Mexico and get yourself some nachos. <laughs> because you you're so excited after getting after getting off of the land and journey into imagination. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably better. That's the, you know. Isn't that so fantastic? <laughs> and they tell you to do Spaceship Earth like later, right? Like when you're rounding out and coming back out, like which it's still it a good, it's still <laughs> a good strategy. 
So, so I wonder how how well, like if we did a, an episode on one of like park specific, how well some of those tips would hold out. Maybe we should tr- we we'll get we we'll get this. We'll we go should. into Walt. Dis- we'll go into Epcot like it's 1985. <laughs> we I've should. Got a really nice, I've got a really good retro Epcot sweater I can wear too. <laughs> we can do that. We should because I think that's really fun to see whether some of this stuff even holds up today. Mm-hmm. Because you know they they do talk about you know heading to Walt Disney World Village and spending the evening aboard the Empress Lily. It's so fun to look back at some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. That's it's awesome. Crazy. It's that's it's, awesome. It's so interesting. Everything that's that's in this book, and this is really just scratching the surface. Like this is just some of the general uh, funny stuff that I that I found at first glance without. Yeah. You know, and Whatever. so back then there was still like the craziness. You had to make reservations for stuff. So you had to make your reservations for the Empress Lily or. Um, yeah. And you made them, I think like 30, like 30 days or 45 days in advance. It wasn't. Um... I love that he says procrastinators may find no room at the inn or no <laughs> space left for the show they wanted to see. So it was just as, as important back then to make dining reservations. Yeah. And golf reservations or tennis courts. You used to reserve the tennis courts too. We used to play tennis there. Believe it or not. Yes, I played tennis as a as a kid. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the contemporary. Um, one thing I thought was uh a very uh I don't know, interesting was and I I think so much has changed, but so much hasn't changed. It's just a different time. But okay. about making your actual reservation. Like so you're gonna go to Walt Disney World and you need to get on the phone and you need to book your room at the contemporary or whatever yes. they have a blurb about calling the central reservation office so and there was also a blurb in here that said like like back then you didn't use a travel agent to book disney world because i don't you think just... that sh- i don't think that they were set up to like compensate travel agents or anything like that like i think it was like you called directly and you booked and that was and that was it. So that's like there was definitely a blurb about that too. Um, but it says so when calling, expect the phone to ring for a couple of minutes. Eh, you know that's what happens. Okay. Up to five or even ten minutes during some busier times wow. before the call is answered. So it says this is to avoid putting callers, most of whom are phoning long, dis- long distance, on hold. The telephone system is handled by a computer. Like this computer was probably the size of like. You know, house. <laughs> <The> house. <laughs> <laughs> that automatically puts calls and orders so don't hang up like this is his tip you're gonna call and it's just gonna ring for 10 minutes oh but you don't gosh. hang up because the phone will and this is so that you don't have to pay long distance it'll just keep ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and then when they pick up and you're making your reservation wow. you're gonna pay your long distance but until then you just stayed on the line until your time was and they picked up and then it says, have a pencil and paper close so that you can jot down the dates and numbers of your reservation. <laughs> but think about it. Like, imagine, like, this would have been, like, if you, how long would you have been on the phone for to make this reservation? Like, long distance was expensive back then. It was. And it's, so how... imagine how long you probably were on the phone, like, you know, checking avail, like, like, or did you just tell them what she wanted and then like they mailed you everything to say, oh, it's all booked. But like, you know, checking your dates and booking your dates and your names and your payment information. And yeah. then say, oh, but I would like to make some like, what if you were making maybe it was a different number, like maybe you called in a different number to make your reservations. I'm not sure your your dining reservations. But yeah, like, oh, I'm I, it's less than 45 days. I need to make my hoop doo review. Like you might have been on the phone for an hour, for goodness <laughs> sakes. But at least they didn't put you on hold. <laughs> they didn't put you on hold till what you were kinda, th- like that is customer service. So <laughs> instead of answering the phone and putting you on hold, they just let it ring so you didn't pay additional long distance fees. Mhm. That's well, pretty cool. You're probably going to be paying enough long distance fees <laughs> once she got through. Because long distance like calling the states used to be very expensive. Yeah. Well, I would think too back then like calling state to state there'd be long distance like this is long True. before um, yeah. nationwide calling, I'm sure. <laughs> I uh, yeah. Canada might just have got nationwide call in like a couple of years ago. The U.S. had it for a lot longer, but I don't know that they had it in 1985. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's so I insane. That, was fun. <laughs> that is insane. Imagine oh, that. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So, and then, so, so yeah. you called to make your dining reservations your, too. Yep. 
you called to make, I don't know, like I said, if it was a different number, the same number, but yeah, dining reservations looks like it's 45 days. Maybe if you're staying on site and if you're off site, it was less. So same sort of thing. You get a, you get a benefit for staying on site. And really like, why, why wouldn't you stay on site when you see the pricing of the hotels back then? <laughs> it was expensive back then. No, I guess, but I don't know. Like we can Not just in move- comparison. <laughs> We could just we could just move in because if you let's see I, I think that's on a different did I put that oh yeah it's you have to scroll a couple pages down where I put that snip there but the contemporary um, this is 1985 in 1985 and the well I don't like the contemporary might have been a little bit pricey for the suites but a room in the garden wing was 105 to 130 dollars and 140 dollars in the tower. And the Polynesian Village Resort Hotel was 105 to 120 without the lagoon view and only $10 more, 130 to have a lagoon view. Isn't that insane? And they're the same rooms today. (laughs) (laughs) Same dimensions, just newer furnishings, but same rooms. And they are probably five, six times that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. So that's so that that's kind of neat to look back to. I don't think that there's like I don't know that if the book really does um gives prices like to tell you like what restaurants cost like you know now when you look at the guidebooks it'll say like a meal might cost this much or how they'll have like the 3 the 3 dollar signs or the 1 dollar signs or whatever like I don't know that the book probably went into that much detail to to do that type of dining planning or 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 resort planning other than yeah. Right. This year but anyways it's pretty cool because it does tell you as well whether like it's advisable to make reservations in advance or not. So there's certain restaurants that they have listed here that it's necessary to make the reservation and then other ones it's suggested. Yeah. Right? Like there's n- it's so it's it's yeah. And now yeah. it's like not at 60 days. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck, right? Like the top of the world (laughs) dinner show. The top of the world dinner show, it's necessary for a reservation. But the one that was suggested is over at the Polynesian. The Tangora Tangora Terrace is Mm. only suggested. So, yeah, it's kind of funny to look back on that. Yeah, like you would say, oh, I don't need to make an advance reservation, so you just wouldn't bother. You're like, oh, I'll yeah. figure it out when I get there. Oh. It's interesting. Fly by the seat of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like, it sounds exciting. It sounds exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I snipped this little thing because I know you ha- love the um, If You Had Wings in the Magic Kingdom. I love that attraction. Yes, everybody's Uh, well aware. Yeah, but I thought this was very interesting because there's a a picture of Eastern Airlines and it says the Wings of the World as they were the official airline. It looks like, like when you made a reservation with Walt Disney World, like after you got off your phone call, they would arrange for the Eastern Airlines representative to call you to book your air, help you book your airfare, which I think that's crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> It Customer service. <laughs> Customer service. <laughs> and then they had pack. They also had packages to like they had packages to Walt Disney World with their like with airline and and hotel. Right. So yeah, I think that's that's just bizarre. Yeah, yeah. and they were they were an official time. sponsor. And now when I see you know when you see some of the branding and stuff like right now. There was last week a big outcry about the M&Ms, like the candy store or something on Main Street had some M&Ms put into the sign. So it was kind of like branding of M&Ms, meaning they're sponsoring something. And everybody's like, oh, you shouldn't be seeing these companies show up there. But Disney has had sponsors all the way along. Like Test Track used to be GM. Like, even way back then, Eastern Airlines sponsored the attraction, and they were the partner. So that it was everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that It's good business and good customer service, <laughs> by the sounds of it. <sighs> yeah, like... Yeah. Yep. I thought that was very interesting. 
So there's um, a t- there was a ticket office right on property for mm, yeah. Eastern Airlines at the and, at the resort. What's is that what it said? Is yeah, there was one Magic right Kingdom. inside the Magic Kingdom attraction. So right inside, if you had wings, <laughs> and oh, the really? other yeah, and the other one was in the in the lobby of the Contemporary oh, Resort. Goodness. Yeah, yeah, it's cr- <laughs> That's branding. <laughs> Oh, well, I think, um, yeah, like, the, like there's a whole bunch of things that when you look at Main Street and Magic Kingdom, like Main Street in particular, there's a lot of things that are that were there that you just could like if you you would you wouldn't believe that they were there back in the day. Like you yeah. wonder why, but they're there. Like that's a whole other open up a whole other can of worms. Like. Like there was like there was a bank you could go to you could go take you out could money go to the bank yeah you could go to the bank on Main Street which <laughs> makes sense because it's Main Street but when you look at the Main Street that we have today you're like that's crazy so, a little absolutely um, one thing I wanted to ask since you had been there when when you were little and maybe you know the, you might not remember this because you were just little but I saw in the Burn Bomb book a little section called Lost Adults and I was like what the heck is this talking about and it says. <laughs> Maybe you might you might have to ask your the elders that were traveling with you because they might have dealt with this because you were too little because you were the lost child not the lost adult. <laughs> but it says lost adults occasionally traveling companions do get separated in the press of the crowds or someone fails to show up at an appointed meeting spot. <laughs> so it's good to know that guest relations maintains message books at Earth Station in Epcot Center and at City Hall in the Magic Kingdom. So you could leave notes for each other. So <laughs> I figured that's what it meant, but that's what it meant. Yes, so that's what it meant. I, so if I, I'm, I'm, we're supposed to meet somewhere and honestly, like we have, I've been waiting half an hour. I'm like, what the heck? I don't know what to do. I'm just going to leave. I'm going to go to city hall. I'm going to be like, Hey, can I um, write in the book, please? And I'm going to write Fr- dear Fran went back to the hotel <laughs> yes. and then you're going to be like, crap i can't find carrie oh it must have been because i was running late she must have like she's probably over in tomorrowland having a pretzel and but then oh, but maybe i'll go check that book and see if she left me a message <laughs> let's see dear yeah. friend <laughs> i went back to the hotel that, that i i'm assuming that's what it is i don't think i ever used it could you ask your family if they ever took advantage of the lost adults book if they yeah yeah Honestly, because it used to be such an issue, like it was always an issue. So the lost adult, because they never wanted to say they lost a child. So it was always a lost adult. And um, you always had to pick a meeting spot. Like you would have known before cell phones. That's like if you couldn't find each other, you couldn't find each other. You couldn't call. Yeah, you but- had to decide to stay put or go check if there was a note left for you in City Hall. Yeah, I guess. Because That's... what else What else can you do? Well, back when the crowds were 10,000 to 20,000, like, you probably could find them. <laughs> yeah, probably. I've only got a few more things on my list, and then we can okay. call it an episode, because oh. I think we've been talking long enough. I know. Sometimes I know. Here we are. We try to keep them like under an hour these days, but sometimes we just. I'm just going to do one. I'm just going to do one more, and we'll talk. And... No, no, no. Some of these are good. Some of these are fun. Okay, okay. go on. Okay, go on. And then, go on. And then we got to digress and get in, and wrap this this up. Okay, okay. So another little snippet that I, that I found in in this book, which again, like I kept thinking about you have spending so much time there that you are going to have the answers to everything here, but they, <laughs> there's a section in the book. And I get, I'd love you to ask your family if they took advantage of this. Plant sitting. Okay. Plant, Plant sitting. sitting. Plants do not fare well in the heat of a closed up car for a day. Those so- <laughs> who have purchased greenery at Walt Disney World Shopping Village or, wait for it, have brought a favorite fern from home. <laughs> you brought plants from home? <laughs> we'll be grateful to know that their horticultural wonders can be accommodated by the kennels at Fort Wilderness or at the Ticket and Transportation Center for no charge. <laughs> I don't remember that. 
<laughs> like, why would you bring plant from home? <laughs> I don't know. And uh, like, like I didn't re- like. Th- these are just a few of the things that stood out to me that I thought was very fu- comical. Like, I did not read this book from cover to cover. Like, I was just kind of browsing and like looking and, and flipping remember, whatever. And these are the things that that like just in the very first wow. section of the book. <laughs> these funny little things. Um, so I thought that's interesting. Like, wow, I yeah. Plant sitting. I, well, I believe, so I do remember, like, plants for sale. Like, it was very big on, they had a lot of those, the shrubbery and greenery and all that, that where they would trim them. Now it's like a whole festival. But back then, they had them, they were just kind of sprinkled around the property. But, yeah, I don't so know you why you... buy a plant and you... Like, why you would can... you bring a fern from home? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is trying to be funny. Maybe okay. Mr. Birnbaum out of Sense of Humor and, and all these things I'm pointing out... We're um, not, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. Maybe. And throughout the book, you'll see, like, things, the way things are worded and phrased is just some of it's uh, kind of awkward and funny, too. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. But maybe he had a sense of humor, and that's, he was maybe. just joking about bringing your ferns from home. Unless you were coming to, maybe you were coming to a fern convention. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> and the last thing I thought of you as well, because you've talked about this many, many times, and I... I didn't really focus on anything too specific with the hotels because that's a whole other can of worms. Whole but other episode. On the on the contemporary, there's there's this book has pages about the the resorts because it seems like the resorts there was there seemed to be a lot more dining and a lot more mm-hmm. time spent at like a real like we think now there's stuff to do at the resorts, but when I look back and see like all the lounges and the dining and the different mm-hmm. cafes at those couple of resorts was amazing like pages of it i'm like holy smokes like and i don't like i'm thinking the contemporary like i'm counting like the places to eat in the bars i'm like i think there's only a handful of them like why are there like two long columns of things to (laughs) where to dine at the contemporary anyway so on the contemporary page you've talked about this many times it's the fiesta fun center yes and the way it says on the first floor of the hotel I, I knew it sounded awesome, but then I read it in the Birnbaum book and I was like, dang, I wish I was there with Fran back in the 80s. Uh, this is one of the world's greatest, the world's, I guess it's the Walt Disney World. <laughs> How many of them are there though? The Walt Disney World's greatest indoor recreational facilities, the biggest and most varied of all the Disney hotels, mechanical game rooms, boasting everything from ping pong to skee ball. Mm-hmm. And a couple of different types of air hockey, yep. asteroids, space invaders, and all of the other current favorites of the pinball and electronic game playing set. Worth at least a look. It sounds like you live there. Wor- worth at oh, least yeah. a look? No, it was, then, it was everything. And then it so goes on to say how they had movies in the theater at the mm-hmm. Fiesta Fun Center, just like you said. Yes. So, like, you you did remember it accurately. I it was, did. It was the world's greatest indoor recreational facility, as it you was, keep telling me. Oh, my gosh, Carrie. It was everything. Like, you, you left the parks. You went back. The hotels used to be part of the vacation. Like, it was fun being at the hotel. And this games room, you could spend hours, and I did spend hours. You get your little roll of like nickels or quarters or whatever it was, and you go down to the games room, and you could spend hours in there, going from Space Invaders to pinball to like all the pinball. My dad loved pinball machines. My brother loved like the Space Invaders. We could spend hours playing that. And Space Invaders, if you ever go and Google it, for people that you know weren't around in that time, it was really quite a boring game. <laughs> when you when you look at it now, like it was just like a little boring. tiny thing and it went back and forth. You could only go left to right. It didn't go up and down. It just went left to right. And you yeah. shot the invaders. Um, but it was like the greatest thing ever. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty cool. I love that game room. Well, and Birnbaum said it was the greatest. It was so the greatest. You, you were, see? You were right. You knew what you were talking about. Your I memory, was. your <laughs> memories were accurate. <laughs> yeah. And you so. could have a whole evening of entertainment in there. And back then, that's when things were a little different. And, you know, one person would take me down to the games room and the rest of them would spend, like, they would be in the room or sitting on the balcony and, yeah, or in one yeah. of the bars in the in the resort. Mm-hmm. It was... Interesting. Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, and I know there was, there's way more attractions now than there was in 
you know, when you're in the parks. But yeah, like when you read the, how they how we told you to spend the day, it, the focus was on, yeah, like take a break and go to the hoop. Did you're only there for two days, but you're going to go to the hoop to do review and you're going to yeah. go, you're going to go, <laughs> add, you, you know, you really should add on a uh, river country so you can have some downtime to go, like have a little bit of different fun or whatever. You know, they, they definitely, the itinerary and the pace that they were suggesting. <laughs> yes. Was, I think uh, that was much different. Carrie, this was such a great idea. I think we need to do other episodes where we do resort specific and maybe look at Ber- the Burn Bob guides from a couple of different years and see how they changed. And I, this has been so much fun. It was fun. I kind of, I, I kind of love this stuff. And even some of the stores, did you, like you clip some of the stores. Yeah, I think that's definitely uh, a good episode to tackle would be um, like looking at Main Street because there's just like it lists all the stuff that was on Main Street that like most people, if you had no idea, you just wouldn't believe. And then um, do another episode on uh, Disney Springs or The Village because I've heard of all the things that were there. And this, and it's, and it's amazing. Like some of the, you're like, what the heck? Like, yep. so to kind of compare or even just to go back, just to remember when, like what, what the village was like and how it truly was a village, like a shopping village and yeah, you get whatever you needed. Absolutely. And just, so. a, I think it would be fun to go through them. I have to call out, there used to be a tobacconist on main street and the sign, this, this, listen to how it's described. The sign outside ranks among the Magic Kingdom's handsomest. The matchbooks <laughs> given out with the purchases are especially attractive. <laughs> and Fun the t- smell of the pipe tobacco is heavenly. <laughs> you, you wait, think wait, of- wait, wait for it. Even non smokers will at least want to breeze through. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Like, reading it is fun. It's funny to think about, and that was 1985, like it wasn't that long ago that that was completely acceptable. They were selling cigarettes on Main Street, no gum, but cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yes, Carrie, we, we have to go through this stuff. Yeah. A great episode. <laughs> really good. Thank you. For, for pulling this out. I'm going to go upstairs and look for some Burn Bob guides for some we'll future for episodes. Bob. Yep. There's, yes. l- there's so much stuff in there. Like, yeah. Yes. Like Just this one guide, we could talk. We could <laughs> do at least like three or four more episodes of talking oh, about we all could. that stuff. We so totally could. We just, t- yeah. And then I knew once we started talking about certain things, we would get chatting and then Babble. all of a sudden, we'd only talk about half the stuff that I snipped uh, <laughs> because we were... Uh, getting to be like an hour where we're almost because, probably close to an hour. I know so. because you and I can do that. Right. And then we babble and then it's like, Oh, these, th- yeah. these people don't want to listen to us babble for two hours. So Carrie, that was yeah. fun. We'll do, we'll do we're more done. detailed episodes. <laughs> okay. We're done. What's your pixie dust? Oh, I thought do you, you were pixie dust this week. <laughs> <laughs> what is your pixie dust this week? What brought you happiness? <sighs> well, <sighs> what? <laughs> what? I'm just gonna keep it simple. Okay. I think my pixie dust uh, for this week is gonna be in, in. Maybe you'll get pixie dust because I t- I teased you so much about you getting your air fryer <laughs> that I then went and bought, <laughs> bought one myself. You teased me so much about that air fryer, and then all of a sudden I get a I get a message one day. What kind of air fryer was it you got? <laughs> So yeah, I got my I got it for free because I used my uh, points. Oh, you I and get your points for free, right? Uh, so, um, but yeah, it was kind of fun. I got my my mom and my aunt were excited about it because because <laughs> I got like this one that has two buckets. It's like a it's a pretty decent, heavy duty, pretty cool ninja. Yes. It's the same brand that you bought because again, you did all the research, so you said that was a good one. So I'm like, I'm gonna get the same one. But I got like a big one with two buckets. Two yeah, eight, you got. Eight, I looked eight at quart that one. Liter, whatever buckets. 
Um, and so I told my mom about it and they were excited. And so then I had to, like, they were asking me every day, did your air fryer come? Did your air fryer come? <laughs> and then when the air fryer came, I had to take it out. I had to send pictures of what the air fryer looked like because they were teasing me about how big it was. My mom's like, did you, do you know how big this thing is? I'm like, I don't know. I and, told you it was a bigger one. <laughs> and, and then my mom, like, I was at her house and she got out her little measuring tape and we looked it up online and she was measuring it out to me. She's like, you better find a place, a good place for that. So anyway, so then when it came, I had to, like, put it where it was going to go and send the picture so they could see it. And then I kind of, like, I was kind of excited about getting it because it was just something different. But then, like, you know, I felt the pressure that I had to, like... Use it? Use it. So I've been like, I've, I went to the grocery store and bought like all things that you like would want to put in your air fryer. So I had to go buy like the right type of potatoes. I bought some cauliflower. I, I really want to make like crispy tofu. So I had to buy a pack of firm tofu. What else did I get? I don't know. Like I went to go to the, I went to the grocery store like with that in mind. So I'm thinking of all these things that I can, um, I can make in my, all these recipes you see everyone post about. So it nice. was kind of fun. And it was fun that my mom and my aunt were excited about my air fryer, more excited than I was. <laughs> and then my mom actually pulled out her air fryer and she's been using it since. So I think I revitalized oh, their, excellent. Uh, their air fryer usage. So they, they, dust, they pulled out their air fryers and dusted them off, dusted the cobwebs. Because <laughs> if, if you put it away, you're never going to use it. That's what my mom was saying. Don't exactly. put it in the cupboard. Exactly. Don't this put it away. This thing's so big, it's not going to fit in the cupboard. Like, it's it's ginormous. I want to see a picture of it because I did look at that one and then I thought, no, nah, I better it's not. Big. Like, I, I don't need, because I kept thinking these two buckets would be handy so I could put my french fries in one exactly. and my chicken nuggets in the other. But mm -hmm. now, but I just dump them all in the same bucket, so. Oh. Yeah. But yes, there's too many good. buttons on it because it's all digital and like you can, I know. you can, you can have it where like you use the one side and you can have it where you use both of them at the same time, obviously, but then it takes longer if you use both of them at the same time. But you can also like click buttons so that if your chicken fingers were 25 minutes and your chicken <laughs> and your French fries were going to be 15, you click a button so that it'll do it all at the same time. So it'll coordinate Ooh. the cooking. So you don't have to, because I have to like put my chicken nuggets in and then let them cook for like eight minutes. And then I got to put my fries in after that. And then I just pour the fries on top. Which, yeah, no, yeah. The, this, you, you could put them oh, both it does in it and say it. that. That's fancy. And, and, it, and it times it out so that they would both cook at the same time, even though You're they both have fancy. different cooking times. You're That's pretty too, like, fancy. It's, this is, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm a simple gal. <laughs> So, not, no, I'm you're not, not too much of you're a complex. Tofu. <laughs> I'm not too much of a complex thinker all the time. So, as soon as I like, I'm like, I'm gonna need to look at this book every time I use it. Like, it's gonna be. I have, I'll have like ten years, and I'll be like, I still need to like read the book to remember how you. I still which, haven't read you, the book. Well, when with the two buckets and the digital <laughs> things, you do need to read the book. But yeah, wow. it's a little, it's a little complex for my noggin, but but uh, whatever. You got to try yeah. grilled cheese in it. You can, uh, like mine is a broiler. It's a, yeah. it's a warmer. It's an air fryer. It's a bake, it bakes stuff. Does everything. It does everything, everything. in it. Like, you never use your oven again. You don't have to. It's not that, like, if you never, you need two of them then. Because like, who, like, I don't know. It just seems uh, like you can't really cook everything you need in two little buckets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But well, I'm it's glad fun. you're enjoying it. Yeah, so, well, yeah, I haven't done anything with it lately, but uh, but I did use it last week when I got it. That's so. good. I and free. I haven't cooked the, I haven't done anything with the new ingredients. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, I made, I did use the new potatoes, the recipe potatoes, but the other right. stuff I haven't attempted yet. I kind of got busy at work this week. The last thing <laughs> I want to do is be creative with my uh, tofu, so. Anyways. Oh, anyways. And we wonder how our episodes go over an hour. Well, I don't even... You should just exempt me from... <laughs> I should get a get out of pixie dust because I'm the reason why the... You asked me what my... I'm not just going to be... Tell you my air fryer and then be quiet. There's got to be a story. No, well, there's got to be a story. We got to share the rest of it. Because when I talked about my air fryer, there was a lot of chatter in our Facebook group about the air fryers because everybody had one. People wanted one. People were buying one. We should check in and see who bought what. And now next week, they'll all be talking about your air fryer. There yeah, you go. send me some recipes. There you go. Recipes for Carrie. Yeah, there's like you go on Pinterest and you're going to be there. Oh, you could be there for You're going to be on Pinterest for a month. And you know what? You're going to be hungry because you haven't eaten a month because you're still on Pinterest trying to figure <laughs> out what the heck you're going to make. Exactly. Exactly. So, anyways, yes. what's your pixie dust? Well, I wonder what my pixie dust is, Miss Carrie. 
I got a little notification that something had arrived at my uh, shipping location. And I went and picked my shipping location. You know, I ship everything to one address. And I went and picked it up and I got it home. And I opened it and it was a gift from my friend Carrie. And it's it's so bizarre because I've been looking at these and then I was like, do I buy them? Do I not? Do I buy? Them? And then I kept seeing them and now I have them. That's so this why you is got them because I kept seeing them on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Carrie. Carrie sent me. They're called Blue Land, and they're like this recyclable hand washing machine thingy i don't know how to describe it so you get what? you get these bottles <laughs> <You're Is sorry>. so- <laughs> <laughs> they're so dispensers that's it <laughs> but there's a whole thing <laughs> there's no mechanism there's no <laughs> But there's a whole thing. It's they're, like not self, they don't, they're not self-washing. They don't wash your hands for you. They're, they're, they're soap dispensers. Oh my gosh. But, they, but they're cool soap dispensers. <laughs> so you get it. So, because there's a whole process. So you get these bottles. And they, the dispensers. They have, the dispensers. But they're like glass. Carrie, they're heavy. Nice. And did you order some for yourself? No, I wanted to make sure yours arrived okay. <laughs> okay, so they did. And they're like glass bottles. And um, they have the characters on them, which is pretty cool. And then you, they come with little tabs. Um, like a little... Um, like, like, <laughs> like dishwashing tabs like like that like a little package <laughs> and you put the tab in the bottle and then you fill it with like warm water and it makes soap poof <laughs> magic so, like magic <laughs> but it's it's a whole recycling story and yes, you, you get you extra tabs, the tabs, so then you just yeah. buy the tabs, so that you just then you keep reusing the bottle, so you're not rebuying like hands. So anyway, so it, they're fantastic. I love them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you needed them in your Disney house. You got Mickey Mouse and, and Disney I, characters everywhere. So I do, I do. So I I love it, and uh, yeah. So I'm gonna get them set up throughout my house. So thank you so much. I love them. I'm gonna post pictures of them. And uh, yeah, they're fantastic. So thank you, Carrie. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that was my pixie dust this week. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that... <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh, here we go. Well, thank you all for listening again. And uh, if you get a chance, please recommend us to someone else that might be looking for a podcast that's just a couple of silly people talking about fun Disney stuff. And uh, share us on social media, tag us uh, where you're listening and, and let us know. And come join us in our Facebook group so we can chat about it. And thank you again for, for listening to us. And we'll chat with you next week. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to the Pixie Dust Fan Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you're following us on your favorite podcast player so you'll get a new episode every week. And find us on social media too. We'd love to hear from you. Till next time, remember, you are never too old to be young. Chase your dreams and design your own happily ever after.